uh, the powers that be uh, try to make sure that they're doing everything to disarm, you know, urban America for the most part, specifically but not limited to. Um, because empowering those people would expose the fact that they're actually not the powers that be. We are. The problem is if you can, you know, um, deep pine a porcupine, it's easy prey. You know, um, and so we the porcupines. You know, we run around here with spines and, 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 and quails and things that can like defend us. So if we can, if, if those uh, false powers that be can convince us to give away our ability to, to defend ourselves and defend our value systems, it's easy to neutralize them. I mean, every time in human history, there's always been a de-armament prior to, a, a, you know, a subjugation. It's not new. It's just that we kind of got like short attention spans and memories, or we don't even know about the historical framework of what actually has been going down in a, in a, in a global context. So, I mean, it's, it's to their advantage. If, I, if it's one of me and I don't believe in equality, and it's 10 people in the room, of course I want to be the only person in the room with guns. You know, of course I want to keep those remaining nine people not communicating with each other, just like, talk like babbling at each other i want the tower of babel i want you know uh the general population the citizens the people that i'm actually supposed to be working for if i don't actually want to do the work but i want all of the you know rewards i just convince people to to, to move in their own disinterest you know and over time i have small you know maybe one or two of those people i pull them out and i help I, you know we share the lion's share of power but when it get down to the brass tacks of it, you have to de-arm me in order to do that. You know, and anyone that pays attention to American history in any way, shape, or form knows, you know, when shit got crazy in the British, we was like, no, Americans, the founding fathers and people to this nation shot them. It ain't like complicated, you know? If you don't have the means to defend the, your value systems and your beliefs, you don't have any. So, you know, it's intricate for them to try to de arm us. I mean, not me and my hood, because we strapped, so that's just what that is. Oh, because anytime you want to learn about something, I'm inspired by the natural genesis of it. Anytime you want to learn about something, you have to go to the natural genesis. And uh, the natural genesis of gun control in America is racism. Before, before America was even technically America, you know what I mean? Even after, you know, Louisiana Purchase, slave codes, black laws, all of these things. The natives to this land, you know, first federal gun grab, I say this a thousand times, wounded knee. You know, uh, melanated beings, whether you call black or Choctaw or Pawnee or Iroquois or in Pennsylvania, Lenape, whatever, you know. Um, to get that guns out of the hands of melanated beings was a part of a very racist section of, you know, Americans at the time, or what we identi or identified as Americans at the time. They came to Turtle Island taking things. Now listen, don't get me wrong, I live here, I'm just a student of history. But the origin and the natural genesis of that is racism. Even after America, you know, okay, every state was constitutional carry. Every state's constitutional carry. Oh, emancipation happens. Now we got to have a different set of rules for the black people that we were just brutalizing and, and, and holding captive for however many years. Outside of the fact that some parts of that story is false because a small percentage of the population owned other people. And it also was free because I want to make sure that's said too. They'll try to paint the narrative like, oh, every melanated being in America was a slave. No, that's not the case. But, um, you know, that's the origin and the natural genesis of gun control. America was founded on firearms. And then it's a contradiction of the highest order to say, oh, but only some people can have firearms now. And, and it being based on your melanin content is racist by the very definition. And it goes directly in opposition to all of the framework of what we've, you know, uh, based this nation upon. Oh, Harriet Tubman, she was a G for real. 
she didn't give a fuck about none of that. And I love it. You know? Um, oh, you're, you're not supposed to read. You're not supposed to free people. You're not supposed to have a gun. She had a gun. So, she, I mean, she put a big middle finger up to that. And I love it. That's, that's feminism. You know what I'm saying? That's liberty in action. So, and, and I love that. And I think that more people should be safe and responsible firearm owners. But don't, I'm not telling anybody to go to jail or prison, obviously. At the same time, you have to be aware that there's a difference between morality, you know, and legality. So just because you can make a rule about something, like slavery was the rule. That morally, I'm pretty sure most people watching this doc right now will be like, yeah, it's kind of bad to own people. You know what I'm saying? And so now, in 100 years, if we do this right, people will go, yeah, it's kind of wrong to, like, tell people they don't have the means that they shouldn't be able to defend themselves. And that's in essence what they were telling people like Harriet Tubman. And that's in essence why Harriet Tubman was like, fuck you, I'm out of here. Then, after that, came back and fought to free more people, led an entire regiment in the army. Harriet was G as they come. The name of the store that we open and where we at right now is gonna be called Harriet's. You know, so she OG for sure. It's controversial of Malcolm holding a rifle depending on who you ask. If you ask people that didn't know that there was a gun safety protocol and that there was none at that day, they'll say, why is his finger on the trigger? And that's controversial to them. Some people will say it was controversial because it was a gun in general. Uh, you know, some people that don't understand the type of terroristic attacks that he and other African Americans were under at that time. If they don't really know the knowledge, they'll say, well, why did he have to have a gun at the window? Well, maybe because his house, his dad was, house was, his family's house was firebombed. His house was firebombed. Yeah, so I want to know who's pulling up in my driveway, you know? So it's controversial because to the people that aren't aware, the people that understand freedom and liberation, you come knock on my door at 4 o'clock in the morning, I'm coming to the door with a gun too. Might be a handgun, might be a rifle. I don't know. It depends on how I feel at night. You know, um, but I think it's controversial because we've gotten so far away from the concept that a firearm is how we defend and protect our freedoms. You know, we, we, we cook burgers on the 4th of July. We light off the fireworks. But I think some, some, some reattachment to those serious issues why are there fireworks? That represents the cannons going off for liber liberation. You know, and so it's controversial if you're uneducated. It's no different than everything that you think is a design. Well, that's a cute design. That's a, that's a symbol. It's a language. It's only a design to you if you don't speak the language. You know, and so it's the same thing. It's controversial if you don't understand the fight that we're in for freedom. Malcolm X was a patriot of the highest order. Oh, the mo for that. Uh, that. That was passed by, you know, a, a lot of my right-leaning and Republican friends. Uh, the, their, their hero, Ronald Reagan. I actually have the paperwork where Ronald Reagan, uh, Mulford, he wrote a letter to Mulford saying, we're watching some of the bills that you're trying to push, and if it gets through, he was going to sign it. I have that paperwork. Um, it's, you know, it's, it's been, you know, Freedom of uh, information, it's time has passed, so now it's available. But uh, it was stopped to keep black people from having their firearms, and that's partially why, no, that's a major reason why California's in a slave state space that it's in now, especially in regards to firearms. It was to deliberately stop the Black Panthers that were being brutalized by corrupt portions of law enforcement at that time. And they were doing nothing but exercising their human right to self-defense, as stated in the Second Amendment. And Ronald Reagan, you know, was very, Ronald Reagan was not pro-gun, was not pro-liberty. Ronald Reagan was, I have a video of him on my Instagram and him talking about, yeah, he's a supporter of this, I'm paraphrasing, he's a Second Amendment supporter, but machine guns have no right to defend, like, I have that video, it's like him saying it. So Reagan wasn't this like great president that people try to act like he was, you know, um, his, his moves in, uh, Ushering in the crack epidemic, damn near destroyed and decimated my community. You know, so Reagan was in alignment with very anti-freedom, very anti-American legislation known as the Mulford Act, designed to stop black people that were just trying to get a little bit of freedom or exercise their freedoms.
Um, I started Black Guns Matter because we saw a need that there was a, a serious deficiency in uh, Second Amendment information, uh, firearm safety training and education, and just a general, you know, understanding that we run this, that we the people, especially in urban demographics. So I wanted Black Guns Matter to reflect that, to give people an understanding of that. Um, and then it kept snowballing and we've gotten larger and larger and more and more people are down with us. Um, how the leaders, the, the hood love us. Law enforcement, if they legit, they love what we do. I've got hundreds of emails from law enforcement offices around the country saying, yeah, man, you're right. Safe and responsible gun ownership is the way to go. We come here after the fact. We come to clean up the mess and take notes. We can't protect you. We at best eight, five to eight minutes away. So the leaders, whether they law enforcement, and when I say leader, I mean a woman or man that is uh, doing positive things for and with their and in the community. Uh, whether they politicians or whether they clergymen and women or whether they, you know, uh, just guys, OGs, guys that did some time, they got some credibility. They love what we're doing. They, 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 they know what time it is. They, they, they know the racist roots of gun control. When you're from a demographic, you understand how th the understanding of how uh, things are written and how they're applied. And we see the corruption and how it's being applied in our community. So the leaders are willing to support things that can reverse that. So we get love. The hood love me. All of the hood. Listen, like Nipsey Hussle said, I got respect in a hundred sets. You know what I mean? And I, I'm honored to be able to say that I have uh, respect from leadership and communities all across America. They love what we do. Um, I've gotten pushback in our efforts from jealous people. Guys, usually it's in the gun community. Guys that's mad. I caught a false rape charge years ago and it got withdrawn by a judge. And that was some of the most trying and, and informative times of my life because people say innocent until proven guilty, but then when you uh, uh, accused of something, especially something heinous as rape, it's like, you know, people fall back. So some of those guys in the gun community that were jealous of me got hold of that information. Gun community, um, supposed conscious community, um, or people that, actors that just wanted to be what we were doing, that didn't have no real credibility in the community. It usually comes from them people. They see how it is. See Jesus, see Judas. See Caesar, see Brutus. You know what I'm saying? So it's usually from people closest, people that uh, you can't be friends with because they want your life, literally or figuratively. So that's usually where I get pushback from, but from beginners and anti-gun, even quote-unquote people that think they're anti-gun, knowing that I'm not attacking them and, and we try to get to the same place of education, mitigating trauma while preserving freedoms. Once, we, they, once they have a conversation or come to a class, they see what we're doing, they're not anti-gun. They go like, oh, I was missing information. But the pushback comes from people that's really just haters, that's jealous. And, and, and they're not really haters. There's no such thing. They just, they just love me and they don't really know how to express that love. You know what I mean? It's a thin line between love and hate. So that's where we generally get the most pushback. But that's usually on social media. I tell people where I'm at all the time. I tweet it. My exact location is whatever. If anybody want to come holler at me and address me in person, they're fully welcome to do so. But it's hard to find somebody that you know got a gun. So, I mean, and it's cool, though. Uh, that's nothing. Malcolm X said, if you have no critics you more than likely have no success. So, I ain't really tripping about that pushback. You know, um, having, 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 like Nipsey Hussle said again, uh, having strong enemies is a blessing. I came to realize that I was a libertarian. For, for a few years, I was a Republican. I was raised Democratic. So it's kind of like religion. I was raised Christian. Then, I, you know, certain things I had questions with, the Christian people couldn't really answer it, the, my, the leaders there. And I started to see contradictions. Then I went into Islam, studied that, saw contradictions. And it's a natural progression. Then you go into Buddhism, Shintoism, or 5%, whatever. Okay, Democrat, I'm raised here, but how come every hood that I go to that's democratically ran is a shithole or has shithole tendencies? You know, you ask those questions, Democratic leadership can't give you an answer. Then you go into Republicans, you know, you're like, okay, I, understand, I know what a republic is. This is actually a republic, you know. Um, but the individual is the highest republic, the sovereign entity, you know what I mean? 
And but then you start getting leadership from some Republican leadership and they soft, they rhinos. So it's like, all right, well, when are we going to be about liberty? I'm, I'm in Philly, you know, and then you start to see, you know, you keep graduating up and evolving. And I'm probably on my way to ANCAP, to be perfectly honest, if I keep evaluating it, you know, um, unless my party can, if we make significant changes, and that's the beauty, it's not even unless, because libertarianism has like five or six different gradations, ANCAP to small letter, small L, libertarian. You know, and, and it's, I like that. I like that balance. I, I like that everything doesn't have to be black and white. There's shades, you know. And so, um, you know, one of my biggest hip hop artists. Uh, uh, I'm a he's he's a, I'm a fan of his. He's a libertarian, big boy from Outkast. So it's like, okay, these are in alignment with the ways that I think. Anyone that continues to do consistent study about the political process and not get their political education up. The natural progression is going to be in a liberty-based ideology, you know, and then you continue to shed more and more masters and more and more shackles to the point where you, you lean more towards an anarchist. And that does not mean you want chaos. That just means I want to be responsible for myself. I don't want a master, you know, and, uh, and that's how I got to libertarianism. Yeah, there's a few people that were very influential to me that I think everyone should check into. I think people should look into um, Friedman. I think people should look into Malcolm X. I think people should look into Thomas Paine. I think people should look into uh, Rothbard. There's a bunch of people from different, I think people should look into Harriet Tubman, you know, Ida B. Wells. Uh, these were all people that were very influential into me merging concepts. They all fall under the banner of liberty, economic liberty, you know, uh, 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 financial liberty, uh, political liberty, all of these other different things. So these are some of the people I think everybody should check into. When they check into them, they should start merging the philosophies and finding, seeing the commonalities. You know, you can't say freedom without saying a Malcolm X. You can't say liberty without saying Thomas pain. You know, you can't ignore Patrick Henry. You can't ignore, you know, uh, people that are creating things like Bitcoin, you know. So we got historical references and current day references that, you know, I, I challenge everyone to look into and just have, and, and then critique them. Evaluate them and critique them and see, you know, chew the meat, spit out the bone. Chew the vegetable, fruit, spit out the seed. Hold on to the seed, you might need to grow something later. You know, and, and don't be a slave to their ideology, but merge as much as you can.